Hey, this is Nadia Kane. I have two decades uh, background in rowing. I've been uh, rowing since high school, and I've spent a lot of time on one of these machines. In the CrossFit world, uh, they are sometimes called rowers. Uh, in rowing, we call this an erg, and erg is short for ergometer. So um, I'm going to show you the rowing stroke in case you haven't had formal training from a rower. So I'm just going to give you a visual first. So there's a few things that I'm focusing on. One of the key things I'm focusing on is strength or connection here, and also strength and connection here in my lats. So lower, lower stomach, lats. Now, in the rowing stroke, you want to, the whole purpose of it is to move the handle with as much power as possible using the strongest muscles before the weakest. So in rowing, our strongest muscles would be found in the legs, and then the muscles in and related to the hip flexors, and then finally the arms. And so that's why in the rowing stroke, when you watch rowers, you see them driving with their legs, opening with their back, and pulling in their arms to use those muscles strongest to weakest. Now, another thing is, is we always want the handle moving with the seat and pretty much the seat is always going to be moving in sync with the handle until the seat stops moving, at which point the handle moves on its own. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So check this out. I push with my legs, the handle moves. The seat stops, the handle continues to move. The handle continues to move as I recover from the rowing stroke. And then now the, sink, the seat picks up where it left off. So again, seat and handle move in unison, seat stops moving, handle continues to move, handle continues to move, and then the seat picks up and moves with the handle again. So this would be the correct rowing stroke. Now, when people make mistakes in rowing, it can be detrimental to their body. Some people can blow out their backs and other people blow out their knees. One of the most common mistakes that people make is rather than driving and then opening up the back, they instead start their rowing stroke with opening the back and then driving with the legs, finishing by pulling in the arms. And so one of the reasons for this is it does feel pretty powerful at first um, because you feel like you're really cranking up, putting a lot of pressure on the handle. And it feels like you're doing something hard and it's because you are actually doing something hard because it's just not very efficient. So uh, if you see somebody that's really pulling like so, you know that they're wasting potential power that they could use later and also potentially going to get a back injury. Another common mistake we see in rowing is when people push but their handle doesn't move. And so this would be a lack of muscle connection, so not connected here, not connected here. And so again, we can push but our, our handle doesn't move, and even just demoing that, my shoulder doesn't like it, it hurts. Um, so that's a common mistake, and so to fix that, you'd wanna be engaged here, engaged here. Um, another common mistake with the rowing stroke is wanting the stroke to last forever, and so pulling the handle up to about here. And so, that's not a motion that can be replicated in the rowing boat, and so we typically don't do that on the rowing machine. So what we'd want to do instead is finish here, and then recover with the arm. Alright, I hope that gives you a little bit more insight to the rowing stroke, finally. The reason you see me putting the handle all the way at the top of my machine rather than in the handle holder is because I'm not going to row anymore today. So I don't want to have my chain stretched out. 
so I'm not gonna leave it here because that's just gonna stretch it out. All right, I hope you have fun using rowing as a good cross trainer for roller derby.